The Stanford Graduate School of Business, or the GSB as it's often referred to, is perennially ranked as one of the top business schools in the world. With an acceptance rate that's almost always under 10%, it's also the most selective MBA program in the world. If you have your sights set on attending the GSB, you'll likely have one question. How do I get in? Hi, I'm Jeremy Scheinwald, founder of MBA Mission, and over almost 20 years, we've helped thousands of applicants get into top MBA programs and hundreds upon hundreds get into the Stanford GSB. In this video, I'm going to discuss how to get in from two perspectives. One, what makes an applicant stand out? And two, how does an applicant write distinct GSB application essays? Be sure to stick around at the end of the video where we'll share some resources that will help you apply to the Stanford GSB. Okay, let's get started. What makes an applicant stand out? When applicants ask me, how do I get into the GSB? They're often hopeful that we'll have some sort of thing that you can do that will magically open the door to the world's most selective MBA program. But of course, there isn't a single job or an amazing activity that gets you in. Still, there's a trait that we've often observed that sets many applicants apart. We find that most GSB admits can reveal a history of initiation and creation. Now, what does that mean, a history of initiation and creation? It means that rather than merely receiving tasks and doing them quite well, successful GSB applicants typically have a track record of creating opportunities for themselves and others in the professional community or even in the personal spheres, or better yet, some or all the above. So let's compare a few applicants from ultra competitive groups within the applicant pool. Let's assume that these applicants have elite GPAs and very strong test scores and are highly ranked at their firms. Now, among our first two applicants, let's say that one participates in a diversity group in her workplace and the other initiates that diversity group. For our second two, let's assume that one volunteers to serve food at a food bank and the other both serves food at a food bank and recruits enough new volunteers to expand the food bank's mandate. Now, a third applicant. One loves photography and is a hobbyist, while the other one loves photography and puts on shows at their local cafe. In each instance, we have one applicant who clearly outshines the other. But what about that one special applicant who does all three of those things, launches a diversity group, expands the mandate of the food bank, and puts on a show at a local cafe. That applicant has an outstanding track record of initiation and creation. She has done nothing truly heroic or impossible to achieve, but has simply seized the opportunities before her that allow her to say to the admissions committee, I am the applicant who always finds my way to do more. And that's a great message to send to the world's most selective MBA program. So we're not offering these three activities as a recipe, but as you prepare for your MBA application year, do everything you can so that you can say, this is mine. These are the areas where I did more. And just remember to let the activities do the talking for you. Don't brag. Now, let's get to those essay questions. How does an applicant write distinct GSB application essays? Stanford asks its applicants to submit two essays. One, why Stanford? And two, what matters to you most and why? With a suggested word count of about 400 words for the first and 650 words for the second. Let's start with why Stanford in 400 words and let's start with what not to do in this first essay. You should definitely not pander to what you think Stanford wants to hear. You may incorrectly think that because Stanford has a connection to Silicon Valley that all they want is entrepreneurs or VCs. That just isn't the case. Um, if you have no history of entrepreneurship, it would be unwise to write an inauthentic story about coming to Stanford to become an entrepreneur because you just won't have the experience to back it up to seem credible. Instead, share your authentic goals and then connect these goals to Stanford's resources in a meaningful way. So don't just write that you're looking forward to the legendary touchy-feely class like almost everyone writes, or the startup garage or some other well-known class. Instead, do your homework and identify ambitious but realistic goals and then explain how Stanford can be the bridge to those goals. Cite specific resources that will allow you to grow personally 
and professionally and stretch those ambitious goals as far as you can. If your research consists of browsing their website a few times, you're not close to the level of depth that you'll need. Network, speak with students and alumni. Attend online admissions events that you can really, really share your authentic connection to the program. Now, let's discuss one of the toughest essays around. What matters to you most and why? This is a question that applicants struggle mightily with. So much so that I co-wrote a book on this topic. As you identify your narrative, don't worry about a right answer or what you think the reader wants to read. Instead, strive to create your answer. If your authentic value is making your difference, living by a truth, maximizing your creativity, or any other value, don't worry if it sounds cliched. What matters to you itself is unlikely to differentiate you. Instead, your ownership of that theme, sharing the experiences that support it, that is what will enable you to stand out and bust through the cliche. With an essay this personal, brainstorming is absolutely critical. It's unlikely that you'll just sit down, write an essay and have it just flow from your fingertips. A strong response will involve a true exploration of decisions, motives, successes, even failures, with a con constant emphasis on how you conduct yourself. We would encourage you to outline your essay and when you write, infuse your essay with your personality, thoughts, feelings, and experiences. Easier said than done, of course, but find your voice and then write about your experiences in a narrative form where the story does the work. Don't tell the reader what matters to you most, reveal it throughout your story. A good test for whether you've nailed this essay is if you or a parent or a sibling or a close friend can read it and say, yeah, that's you. The admissions committee isn't looking for some spectacular feat, but they're seeking to know, to get to know who you are and what makes you tick. Together, these two essays are your chance to share your ambitions and your values. By doing so, you're starting a conversation with the adcom, one that they'll hopefully want to continue in an interview. If you'd like more inspiration for your Stanford GSB application essays, be sure to download my book, what Matters and What More, 50 Successful Essays for the Stanford GSB and the HBS and Why They Worked, which gives many examples of actual HBS and GSB essays submitted by successful applicants, along with my commentary on the strengths and sometimes the weaknesses of each one. You should also download MBA Mission's free Insider's Guide to the Stanford GSB, which goes in depth on the resources, environment, activities, and community of the GSB and also offers first-hand information from alumni, admissions directors, current students, and our own admissions consultants. We'd love to speak with you about your applications and give you a chance to learn for yourself why so many of our past clients rave about us online. Click the link below to sign up for a free 30-minute consultation with a member of our admissions consulting team. Thanks so much for watching. And remember, if you enjoyed this video, and want to get more MBA admissions and application tips, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel.